நமோ சித்தானம் ஜெய் ஜினேந்திரன் திஸ் இஸ் சமணார் மலை அண்ட் ஏன்ஷியன்ட் ஜெயின் ஹில் இன் த கிளக்குயில் குடி வில்லேஜ் அபவுட் எலவன் கிலோமீட்டர்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் த ஹெரிட்டேஜ் சிட்டி மதுராய் இன் த ஸ்டேட் ஆஃப் தமிழ்நாடு இந்தியா இன் தமிழ் சமணார் மீன்ஸ் ஜெயினா அண்ட் மலாய் மீன்ஸ் ஹில் ஹென்ஸ் சஜஸ்டிங் த நேம் சமணார் மலாய் ஆர் த ஜெயின் ஹில்ஸ் ஆர் த ஹில் ஆஃப் ஜினாஸ் It is an elongated massive rocky hill complex stretching in east-west direction that is spread across 3 km. Historically, it is a part of Thiruvuru Vagam cluster of hills. It is a picturesque site with natural rocky setting and a water body at the foothill. Samalar Malai was closely associated with the famous Jaina monastery known as Thirukattam Palli at Thirukattam. Kurandai village which is around 6 km along the southeast direction of this hill the inscriptions found here dates its history back to 2nd century BC there are three different ancient jain vestiges at samanar malai a rock with an inscription then pechipallam a series of jain sculptures and inscriptions engraved on rocks then settipudavu a cave with tirthankar carvings and inscriptions let's start a journey by understanding more about the rock boulder with an inscription this rock boulder has a brief one line inscription in tamil brahmi script it dates back to 2nd century bc it reads as pool of tattai or peru terur this inscription probably commemorates the association of a person known as tattai with the pool on the hill which was probably deepened or renovated by him now moving further let's try to know more about pechi pallam pechi is a term denoting a demi goddess found in the villages of tamil nadu pechi is a corrupted form of yakshi the attendant lay deity of a tirthankara in jainism Pechipallam is a picturesque place with a lotus pond at the foot of the hill Samanar Malai. One has to climb about 150 steps and walk a short distance along the rocks. At the top of the hill is seen a natural water spring along with a galaxy of jinna images carved on a face of the rock. To the extreme right is the carving of Lord Bahubali flanked by his sisters Brahmi and Sundari. Then we have the carving of Tirthankara Parshvanatha in Kayot Sarga or standing posture who is being subjected to different kinds of tribulations by Kamata as indicated in the Jaina epics. Above the Tirthankara's head is seen the umbrella being held by Yakshi Padmavati who is standing on the left of the Tirthankara. Besides the Tirthankar's feet to the right is seen Kamata seeking forgiveness after realizing his mistake. Besides this is seen the carving of Tirthankar Parshvanatha in Kayot Sarga. Next to this is seen the carving of a Tirthankara in Paryankasana or sitting posture who is flanked by Chauri bearers. Besides this is seen the carving of a Tirthankara in Paryankasana with its head being mutilated the idol is flanked by chauri bearers besides this is seen a carving of tirthankara parshvanatha in kayot sarga with the image of dharanendra yaksha holding chauris in his hands and snake hoods above his head this is in fact a very rare carving from an iconographic point of view next to this carving is seen the carving of a tirthankara in paryankasana flanked by chauri bearers the celestial beings and the chatratraya above the tirthankara's head are seen to the extreme left is seen the carving of tirthankara parshvanatha in kayot sarga besides these eight reliefs at the pechipallam site are the six tamil inscriptions in vattaluttu script from donus This helps us to date them between 9th and 10th centuries with two possibly from the late 8th century. These inscriptions provide very interesting details. They give details of individuals who caused to carve these images, 
These inscriptions also give the particulars regarding the existence of a residential school at this place and the names of the persons who managed the school and the students who studied here. It had a relationship with other school which functioned at Kurundai near Aviyur which is located at Madurai or Appakottai main road. Thus, the Pechipalam site had become popular to the wealthy patrons supporting Jaina ascetics by around 9th century AD. Further up from the Pechipalam reliefs is seen a temple whose jagati or the plinth of a temple has survived. There is a 10th century inscription along the jagati. It has names of some visiting gurus from Mula Sangha of Shravana Balagana. At the top of the Samanar hill is Velakatum, which is nothing but a solitary stone lamp post. Not too far from the foot, this post is an 11th century or more likely 12th century pre- predominantly Kannada inscription with one line in Tamil. This is also a Jaina inscription. Taken together with many more 11th to 13th century Jaina inscriptions found in Madurai area, other regions of Tamil Nadu and Karnataka, this Kannada inscription found at Samanar Hill confirms a thriving Jaina tradition in Madurai area through the 14th century and an active interaction between the Digambara Jaina sites and shrines in Karnataka and in Tamil Nadu. A structural temple of Jains called as Madhavi Perumpalli was constructed at this hill by a Pandya king Parantaka Veera Narayana who lived or ruled during the period 860 to 905 AD. Only the stone base is remaining here with an inscription belonging to the same king's period. Through this record, we can come to know that the name of the village was Uirkudi and the hill was called as Tiruruvagam. The name is changed as Amirta Parakrama Nallur. In addition to this, details of some lands nearby the village donated to this Jain temple is also known from this record. Now, let's move on to the third Jaina vestige that is found along this hill, which is the Jaina cave along Sitti Pudubu site. At barely about 200 meters from the eastern side of the hill is a cave located besides or behind the Jain hill and is called as Sitti Pudubu. One can reach the cave by climbing a few steps shaped with trees and greenery along its path. On the face of the rock, there is a huge 8 feet sculpture of Lord Mahavira, which is about 15 feet from the ground. It is an important Jaina vestige as it is a big one among the other hill sculptures inscribed during the Pandya rule. The Tirthankara is seen in Paryankasana, which is inscribed above a pedestal and is flanked by chauri bearers and celestial beings above the Tirthankara. In addition to this, Bodhi Tirthankara's head is seen a Chatratraya and a tree. Below the Tirthankara's pedestal is seen a three lines 9th century inscription. It records that the image was carved at the instance of Gunasena Appa Periyadi Gal, the pupil of Vardhamana Panditar, who was the pupil of Gunasena Deva presiding over Kurundai Tirukattam Palli in Vembunad. As you see here, adjacent to this is seen the cave with horizontal and vertical ridges and just particularly these ridges are carved above the cave. These cuts are made in such a way that the rainwater does not enter the caves so as to ensure the cave remains dry. There are five sculptures inside the cave, among them three are of Tirthankaras in Paryankasana. To the extreme left is the sculpture of Yakshi Ambika and to the extreme right is a sculpture of Kotravai. The last one is shown as a fighting scene where Kotravai Yakshi is seated on a lion and finding with a man seated on an elephant. The Jaina inscriptions are seen below these sculptures and again these are the Tamil Jain inscriptions 
inscribed in the Vattelluttu script. One of the inscriptions records that the image was carved at the instance of a pupil of Gunasena Deva who was in charge of this palli. The second inscription records that Gunasena Deva presided over this palli. Next, the third inscription records that the Abhinandana Bhattara was the pupil of Arimandala Bhattara who in turn was the pupil of Abhinandana Bhattara again was a pupil of Kanakanandi Bhattara caused this image to be carved. It also refers to Kurandai Tirukattampalli. With this, we conclude a journey through this ancient Jain heritage center near Madurai. This is Nitin H.P. here, founder and executive director of JainHeritageCenters.com, signing off. Thank you. Jai Jinendra. Namo Siddhanam.